welcome. Thank you for joining me at What Else? Maria loves to talk, you guys. Have you missed me? I miss you. <laughs> Uh, how was your Thanksgiving? I know I'm late on the videos, you guys. Yeah, but hey, I want to talk about Thanksgiving. Did you enjoy that cornbread dress and the turkey, the ham, the gumbo? I don't know, maybe the tamales. Almost through. Are you going to do like we do? Wait until after. After the holidays. <laughs> That's right. When everything is 50%, 75% off. That's right. That's the best time to go. After Christmas is over. That is it. Yeah, we're going to buy a couple gift cards, gift certificates, um, go out to eat, visit people, go to their home, eat there. In fact, I went out and bought some Crown Royal, the small one, not the big one, $25 one. I haven't had that in ages. Still didn't have any. Some, uh, I think it's called Jim Jim Jar or Jam Jar Red Wine. The guy said it was really good sweet because I love sweet. We love sweet. And then I got another one. I think it was it Asti. Asti. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They're not open. We haven't opened them. The only thing I opened because I I didn't want to spend the twenty dollars at Specs, the pecan pie, the Crown Royal pecan pie, and I read the reviews. I'm not gonna tell y'all. Y'all go and y'all look for yourself. But I said, hey, I can do the same thing. So I did do the same thing. We did. We went to Sam's, got our pecan pie, uh, just about a week ago because they didn't have any left uh, right during Thanksgiving. I drizzled that um, Crown Royal all on it. Threw it in the oven for a couple minutes, took it out, let it sit. So good, so yummy. But hey, I don't know. I guess when you cook, you do not. I cannot taste the the liquor because I didn't really. I mean, it tastes different from what the pecan pie normally tastes like. But I didn't taste a strong. We didn't taste a strong liquor. So hey, what is this video about, you guys? Passport Bros. Passport Bros. And no, you guys, I ain't hating on them. I'm not hating. This will be the last video. Probably going to be part one, part two. I want to finally throw in my 25 cents, my 50 cents, my dollar. Uh, I've looked at my, uh, inf my, my little stuff. I should say my stuff, my little notes. And I've got things from three, four months ago. And I was like, why haven't I used it? I need to use it, get out of the way, because my next video, and stay tuned, I will be talking about the war in the Middle East. That's going to be the next one. And again, I will be talking about the um, dating app horrors and a lot of just a lot of crazy things that happening in the news lately. So, hey, if this is something you, you want to hear, you want to know, uh, stay tuned. Go get you some snacks. Come on back. <laughs> and no, I'm not going to be attacking these guys. You, you know what I'm thinking? Hey, we've got passport gals or passport broads. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to talk about them as well. <laughs> I know y'all sitting down with your popcorn, potato chips. I don't know, maybe your strawberries, blueberries, kiwis. In fact, kiwis, I just saw some great kiwis called red kiwis at Sam's the other day. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and just, what is a passport bro? Passport bro is nothing new. It's just a, a little jazzy word definition that these new age guys today have given it. Men who travel abroad to explore the horizons. <laughs> Uh, maybe they're looking for just to have fun, uh, you know, m maybe to sightsee, maybe to find the golden city, uh, maybe f to find the fountain of youth, may maybe to find some gold, maybe to find a wife. Okay. But it's basically dudes, men who are traveling overseas to different countries. It looks like the most popular countries has been uh, Mexico, Dominican Republic, Colombia, Venezuela, Philippines, um, Thailand, Cambodia. Am I leaving something out? Let me. I have to look at my little notes, you guys. Am I leaving anything out? Uh, Costa Rica, who are some of the uh, famous, I shouldn't say famous, but some of the guys that 
I don't know, I would say they got in trouble. Yeah, that's right. But there's been a lot of articles been written about them. A lot of YouTubers are talking about these guys. A lot of other YouTubers, young and old, want to be like these guys. Who am I talking about? Austin Holloman. He's one nice-looking young guy. In fact, he really don't fit the profile or the, the description that you would think uh, of a dude going overseas. Because he's a young guy and he's fairly nice looking. Another guy, Ebieto. Passport bros have gone. I'm going to go. We're going to go way, way back in time. What passport bros? The Moors. They come to mind. Before the Moors, let's talk about the Neanderthals and the, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, Dana Vincent's. Okay. So way, way, way back, like 20,000 years ago, recently, some scientists in a cave somewhere in Siberia, oh my God, just the, the thought, snow, ice, glaciers, Ugh, that scared me. <laughs> I'm a hot, warm-blooded person from the South. Love Texas, love Louisiana, even though I hate the humidity. I, I, so I can't do the cold. I can't do places like Chicago, New York, um, Detroit, Wisconsin, <laughs> um, you know, Minnesota. Can't do those places. So getting back to this discovery, uh, they found a frozen woman or mummy, whatever, and she was pregnant and they saw where... Uh, the child that she was carrying was of a different breed. So this is showing that Neanderthals and the Denovinsons, a whole group of people, they were getting together and mating and hooking up way back then. So people were hooking up different groups or uh, I don't know if you would say races was hooking up way back then. You know, it's definitely going to happen today. So let's go over who are some of the passport bros from way, way back in time. First left North Africa, conquered Spain, Portugal, Italy, took a whole lot of women. Okay, we got that. We got Genghis Khan, and he had a whole bunch of sons, and they got a whole bunch of women. He had like 40 or 50 sons. And one of his sons had a whole bunch of uh, children too. Attila the Hun. Uh, we have the Vikings. Nobody, you know, talk about the Vikings. Of course, we had the um, conquistadors, the travelers, the explorers that left Spain and Portugal. And then we have two, oh my gosh, excuse my little dogs, two uh, black um, men who travel with these um, Span Spaniards, and they try not to give these guys credit. Estevanico or Esteban, I don't know if I'm saying the name right, but I will post it. This man discovered, I want to say it was Arizona and New Mexico. Tyler Perry, make a movie about this man. They didn't want to give him credit. Uh, we also have, guess what, you guys? The Mayflower. That's right, the Mayflower. They were passport bros as well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> guys. Then we can go into World War One, World War Two. We haven't had World War Three yet, have we? I don't know. Seems like we are in World War Three. Uh, we had the Vietnam War. We had the Korean War, where men were going to Germany getting uh, war brides. They were going to France, getting war brides. They were going to um, Japan, getting war brides. They were going to Italy. Even the, the black men were going to these places like England, uh, Germany, whatnot. And in some cases, they were given a hard time to try to bring their European wives back. Even the ones that found black wives, they even gave them a trouble trying to bring those women back, even if they were fair complexion. And I will, you know, Liz, as you watch, and I'm watching my, I'm posting little stories and pictures of people. I know I'm leaving out some people. I'm thinking of also, I don't know, I, I know people are going to argue with me about this. Would you say that Solomon? 
was a passport bro in the Bible? Would you, I don't, I don't know what you say he was. Um, you know, he had a lot of wives. You guys, who am I leaving out? So now fast forward to today. <laughs> I just, cause you know, I've been in my own little world, doing my own little videos on, you know, the dating app horrors, the missing people, um, stuff like that. The few, of course, you know, my perfume videos. I know I have a big perfume haul coming up. So, uh, getting back to Passport Bro. So, the deal of what I'm picking up here, there, um, they are tired. I thought it was just dudes wanting to travel, doing like the waiting to exhale. Okay. We remember waiting to exhale. Okay. So, that's what I thought. But no, they have some type. I don't know if it's all of them. But the little bit that I have seen, and I watched them this morning to, to get prepared to do this video, they have a thing against the Western woman, the American woman, the Canadian woman, the Australian woman, the English woman, and of course, the black woman, the melanated woman. You know, we, we're, we're, we're too aggressive. We're not feminine. We're not fit. We're not fine. We confrontational. We got a big ass mouth, y'all. <laughs> you guys, you guys, like, what? I'm gonna just keep it really realer than real. I really need to change my 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 format from Maria loves to talk to Maria keeps it real. I was showing one of my nieces, my older niece, and she was like, "Andy, don't show me this. I don't want to see it." It's too much negativity. It's too much negative energy. I, it's just blocking my chi or whatever. It's like, you know what? A lot of these guys, maybe not all of them, they have some issues. And it's bigger than Big Shirley. It's bigger than the Western women who love to shop at Burlington, Ross, Walmart, Saks Fifth Avenue, Macy's, Dillard's. It's way bigger than that. It goes all the way back to them being in mama's womb. You know, maybe, you know, maybe they have mommy, daddy issues. A lot of them, the little bit that I've seen, I've been checking out, look like they need to, to, to be on the chair with the psychiatrist or Sigma Frog with the little, with the, the pipe interviewing them, talking to them about their issues. Because if you... Can't make it here. What is that song Alicia Keys sing? Uh, that New York, New York, New York. You can't make it there. You can't make it nowhere. You can't cut the 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 mustard here. You can't kick it. You can't lick it here. You going somewhere else? Now, if you're just actually vacationing, but if you're going there because you fed up with this woman, that woman, so I'm going to go over here. I feel, feel about passport bros. I feel like they are a group, a subset of black men that are making a bad rap for all black men and the fact that you have to travel abroad when there are millions of women in America to find love lets me know that you are just not a good human. Um, it speaks volume to who you are and also let's be clear that a lot of them are actually going over there um, to participate in sex and to manipulate people who are underprivileged and have been impoverished. It would be a real f of human to have to go to an entire other country to find someone to love you when there are millions of people standing around you in the country that you come from. I hate love here. I, you got to start thinking about you being a problem and not the people that exist. Everyone else can't be the problem issue, especially because it's a small group of them. It's not enough for y'all to say that it's a systemic issue. So I think that they need to get a grip. Huh, good answer. I will play some videos for y'all to look at one of the guys and it's and he's not talking about uh filipinos or any he is talking about asian women but i've, I've watched this guy video he's in the manosphere uh he doesn't come off as funny but to me when i watch the videos i can't help but to laugh but he be on the money he is on the money who i'm talking about rich cooper uh, Rich Cooper clips and uh, guys, and I think he's he's an author. He's written several books, and I I never thought I would have watched his video, but I watched it, 
watch some more and i was like golly i'm watching this dude's video and it's awfully funny but he's he's on the money he's telling the truth and he's not being mean he's not being malicious he's not putting these guys down he's not making them look like total dumb dumb fools which we kind of know that some of them are yeah some of them are uh, friendliness to fathers in divorce or uh, in custodial issues and stuff like that. And by default, the first thing I would do, don't, don't tell her why you're moving to the state. Just tell her you're going to buy her a nicer house or you got a, a better job. I assume you can work remotely by the way you described your job. Either that or remote work will either be required or you'll have to get a new job to do this. But I would move to a state that's friendly to fathers if you're not already in one right now. So that would be the first step because if you're going to get divorced, like you already know, her immediate strategy as well, I'll just leave the country and take the children with me. And make no mistake, I've seen this happen a lot of times with these Chinese wives. It's not an empty threat. They, they do do it. And there's lots of videos online of guys complaining about it. I think uh, Tech Lead, if I'm not mistaken, a large YouTube channel with over a million subs, has several videos where he's talking about his wife stealing his child and basically taking off back to Asia. Now, back to our friend over here. So move to a state that's friendlier to fathers. Consult with a lawyer to plan your strategy. Let your lawyer know what her strategy is and make sure that you take all the appropriate steps to ensure that you remain in your children's lives, that you can continue to parent them. A shared parenting plan is ideal. It's where the children spend about equal time with both parents. She's clearly batshit crazy. I don't care if she's narcissistic or what it is that the diagnosis might end up be, but she is a difficult woman. And a difficult woman in a marriage will become even more difficult in a divorce. The upshot of all that all is, well, guess what? You're going to be able to have sex again because you're not going to be dealing with a sexless marriage type of situation. You're going to be able to live your life on your terms. She's not going to be able to tell you much of what to do, especially if you're in a state that's friendly to fathers, not hostile to warthers fathers. Must be friendly. Do that research first. And you just carry on living your life as a uh, divorced single dad with your two kids. Raise them as best as you can. Do not invite psychopath women into your life like our friend over here ever again. Doesn't matter how hot she is or what she's doing that the other girls didn't do. If she demonstrates red flags, you do not invite her into your life. Now, you've mentioned one, two, and seven red flags. I don't know if you're referencing the ones in my list because there's 20 or you skipped three through six, but I guarantee you she's got a lot more than just those three that you posted over there in your written request. That is my advice for you. Get out. You will never, ever find an opportunity to make an unhappy woman happy for you that does not have genuine burning desire. I talked about this, I believe it was chapter three in my book. You only ever want to deal with women that have genuine burning desire for you. Let's just really break it down into little pieces. And I'm a shopaholic, and I think maybe half of y'all are shopaholics. We even have men who are shopaholics, but they want a minute. How many of you guys and gals leave Macy's, leave Dillard's to go shop at Goodwill and that's Salvation Army, um, I don't know, fire sale, garage sale. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it because I go at least once every two weeks to a thrift shop or whatnot. We used to go like almost every other day or every weekend. How many people do that? I don't know too many people that, that will do that. How many people going to leave Kroger's, um, Safeway, uh, Publix, um, Millard's to go to get your food or your meats on the side of the road from the dude that's on the side of the road selling mystery meat? How many of y'all do that? I mean, I know that some people will stop and get a, a watermelon uh, from a dude selling watermelon or, or you know, some kind of fruits, but your meats and whatnot. Who's leaving a jewelry store, a Takori jewelry store, Hertzberg jewelry store, Neil Lane, a Pandora to go to the pawn shop? Now, I'm not knocking a pawn shop or any of those Cuban Zirconia places. They have some good stuff, but if you have the funds, if you have the money, we're not leaving. I'm not leaving. And I used to work at a jewelry store. We're not leaving the jewelry store so we can go over there to, to Cash America 
and get those little milky diamonds or the little cubits of cone or the little things that we're not really sure if it's all real gold. We're not doing that. Okay, we're not. And that's what it looks like when you push back and you stop, as in my case, you stop and you really just look and investigate and, and see the players and what they're saying and just look at what some of these guys look like. When I was a younger chick, single available, and I knew I was hot to try um the the few that I have seen besides little Austin Holloman and Austin Abieto, most of these dudes are not someone that you will want to take home to your mom, to your family members, or you want your co-workers to see you with. Did I just say that to you guys? Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Uh I will play. I saw where the woman that everybody's fussing with, Miss Helga, from, she's one of um, the Filipino women who do, did a lot of clapback at women, or like, I don't know if it's geared toward black women. She was doing her clapback. 